everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. In this video, what I'm going to do is detail now the building of this ship from Oblivion. And if you're unfamiliar with the movie, it came out in 2013. Um, it stars Tom Cruise, and it's about a post-apocalyptic world. And he flies around in this ship that you see here at incredible speeds. The movie is filled with action, and what I enjoyed the most about it are the uh, ships and the tech uh, that you see in the film. If you're at all a fan of sci-fi concept art, you'll really get a kick out of this movie. So this kit, I guess, is what you would call a garage kit. It's produced by Fantastic Plastic, and um, it is uh, obviously not uh, mass-produced in the general market, but it is available online. And uh, so let's go ahead and open up this box here and see what's inside. Okay, so the kit comes, of course, with instructions. And um, the kit is mainly made of resin. And uh, so I've already uh, separated the parts here and actually cleaned them off. So let's go ahead and take a look and lay them out and I'll show you what's, uh, what uh, comes in the kit here. All right, so here we have now the main body. We have these circular uh, components here, which are the engines. Uh, this piece here makes up the cockpit along with the seats. And this is a neck piece that connects the cockpit to the main body. Moving over here, we have a bunch of different pieces, including the wings and other components. Uh, you can see there's some landing gear here. And these parts are all made of resin. And as I move over here, you also see some landing gear, and these are made of metal. Whether we use the resin or the metal depends on the configuration we want to build. If you are going to build it in the flying configuration, where the landing gears um, are retracted, uh, you're going to use the resin parts. And if you're going to build it in a landed configuration, which is what I'm going to do, we're going to use the metal parts. Now, I've worked with a number of different resin kits, uh, mainly Star Trek kits in the past, and I have found over the years that the quality can vary. And what I mean by that is uh, the quality of the pieces themselves, how they come out of the mold. Sometimes the detail isn't very sharp, you can have bubbles and all sorts of surface defects. Um, and for the most part, this actually looks pretty clean. So when working with resin, uh, you definitely have to clean it off, usually using a detergent, uh, because there are some agents on the surface that they've used to, um, uh, in the process of molding it and taking it out of the mold, that can impede the uh, uh, paint from spreading um, evenly. And um, I've already done that. I've washed all these parts off. And when working with resin, you have to be ca very careful if you're going to be doing any sanding. Um, Preferably you want to sand the model wet, uh, that way you don't have a lot of dust flying around, but if you uh, can't do that, uh, you definitely need to wear a mask with a respirator, and that way you're not breathing in the resin, because uh, resin in the dust form is um, not very good for you, so you don't want to breathe that stuff in. So when you're working with resin, just be uh, careful to take those precautions. Now you can see in the picture that the cockpit is enclosed in glass, and so the kit also comes with these plastic pieces here. Uh, to be cut out and placed into the cockpit area. And there is a small decal sheet that you see here. So it doesn't look too complicated to put this together. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, again, what I did first was to wash everything off so everything is ready to be primed. So that'll be the first step for me now is to prime the model. All right, well, actually, before I prime the model, I had to work a little bit more with the pieces. Uh, again, this is a fairly clean uh, mold but um, there are a few things that you do need to clean up here. Uh, first of all, I had to work on the engines here to make sure that these uh, round areas accommodated both the uh, wings as well as the main body. Um, also had to work on these exhaust um, pieces here. They're going to go on the back side. There was some uh, residual uh, resin here on the inside, so that had to be cleared away. And then this is the cockpit here, and it sports both a top and bottom turret. Uh, had to be drilled out here so they can accommodate the turret. And then this uh, section on the inside here uh, will connect to the pins that uh, the turrets have on them so it can stay in place. And that is where the uh, pilot seats are going to go. All right, so uh, overall really not, not, not uh, any significant bubbles or surface defects here that I'm dealing with. I did have to sand a few things here and there, but uh, nothing major. So now we are ready to go ahead and prime. I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and I uh, will show you my progress here in a second. Alright, so while we're waiting for things to dry here, I've already painted the main body white and uh, some of the other parts I've used the uh, Tamiya's gloss aluminum. Still have another coat to give that there, and so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm now cutting out the um, 
clear parts here. So these are the uh, round pieces of uh, glass that go in the cockpit, or at least simulate the glass anyway. And uh, they came molded into a single piece like this, so you do have to cut them out. And this is where a Dremel comes in handy because I've been using it as a grinding stone. Just uh, turning it on and um, using the uh, stone to make it more even along the edges here. And uh, these are going to go um, inside this cockpit area here. Alright, so um, this still needs to be painted. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the uh, clear parts here and then we'll move on. Alright, so I'm finishing the paint job here on this part of the ship. And the front part needed to be painted this aluminum color, and I just used masking tape for that. Uh, but the challenge here was to try to uh, cover this ring area here. And what I decided to do was to get a new type of, um, at least new for me anyway, uh, liquid mask, and that's the stuff made by Humbrol. It's called Maskol. So, similar to the one I've been using up until now, this liquid masking film, uh, the difference though is that this is a purplish color so it doesn't dry clear like the other one and on a white surface here that was really helpful so I applied the uh, film around the edge here and you can see it's just uh, and I painted it of course and then you can see now it's just coming off here quite easily you just peel it off like so so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on here and I'll show you the end result alright so hopefully you can see it in this light but we now have the uh, inner ring there painted with the gloss aluminum from Tamiya and uh, the Mask all was pretty easy to take off, you just rub it right off. So uh, again, what I like about it is that it is a purplish color, so it um, is a little bit easier to see, especially on white surfaces like this. Alright, so I'm going to keep going along and uh, keep you apprised of my progress. Alright, what you see here is a picture of the interior, and these are the seats, of course. And the challenge here is to paint the seats in this fashion, with the white trim and the uh, black seat cushions. So I just finished doing that, let me show you how it turned out. And I had to do this all by hand. Uh, what helped me out tremendously was this gadget that I got here. This is a headpiece here you can put on. It has these magnifying lenses and a light that you can shine on the subject that you are looking at. Now, I am well over 40 uh, and definitely need reading glasses. Uh, that's what I typically use when I work on models. But in this case, um, I'm glad I had this uh, on hand because it really magnified everything. And um, the uh, seat cushions are um, uh, somewhat elevated there, so you can uh, follow along the lines as long as you can see them. And so I used a fine tip brush and some black paint, of course, and was able to complete them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to move on. We're getting closer to final assembly here. And I, you know, I will then uh, show you my progress here shortly. All right, so here we have now the completed uh, cockpit. Uh, at least the seats and the foot pedals have been attached. You have the uh, joystick in the middle, and uh, this semicircular piece just glues on to the back side, and uh, just includes those overhead buttons and uh, this section here. So this will slide into the cockpit area now, and what I'm doing here with this section is um, gluing in the windows. The windows had to be trimmed. It comes in uh, just uh, plastic with the appropriate shapes uh, molded and then you trim around that and you just start putting them into place here. So the first to go in are the back side windows. Now I'm going to put the upper ones. Then I'm going to slide the seats into place um, and then the front windshield and then eventually the side doors. Side doors will have to have a ring of um, aluminum uh, painted around the edge there. Uh, so that will be the next thing to do. So I'll just keep moving along here. And just to show you how the rest of the windows are coming along here, these are now the bigger windows uh, that are in the top section actually, it's just inverted here. And just putting them into place with super glue. And then the engines had to uh, be glued together here, these, these exhaust ports here that go along the uh, back side of each of the engines. So uh, next will be to put in the seats, I'll show you that shortly. All right, so I'm trying to put this cockpit together, and as you can see, there's a lot to cram in in this small space. And sure enough, there's a little spacing here uh, with the upper windows that can't be helped. So um, and at least the lower windows are staying in place, but uh, I finally got it all in there. Essentially, this hooks in with this uh, C uh, section that's behind the seats. There's an opening for the um, 
uh, little post that protrudes from each of the turrets and that's what holds the uh, end pieces in place. So next thing now is to put in the front windshield. All right, well, just like I thought, that was a challenge to get that in there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this little cockpit here, and there really isn't a lot of room. Uh, but with some maneuvering, I was able to finally work in the front windshield so it's in place now. And I added some super glue at the uh, ends here to hopefully hold it in place. So I'm just going to let it sit here and dry, and then we'll move on. All right, so next up would be to add this metal border around the door, as you can see it here and here as well. And had I thought about it, I should have painted a circular border around here too. I could still do that, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, now that I have everything in place, I'm just not going to take risk of messing this up. So I'm going to leave that as is. So the doors, just like uh, the other windows here, come in a piece of plastic that you have to cut them out of. And that's what I have here. So of course the challenge now is to mask this off in a circular fashion. And uh, the way I've done that in the past is I've utilized these French curves here, but uh, this time uh, I'm going to go ahead and use something different. I actually found this bottle that has the same roundness as uh, this door here, so I'm using that as my guide. So I just placed it on some masking tape, traced around it, and I cut out pieces that I was able to now mask off this section here. So this one's all ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mask off the interior, and I'll do this one, and then we'll go ahead and paint the uh, trim with uh, the gloss aluminum color. So I'll proceed with that and I'll show you when I'm done. Alright, so you can see the doors are uh, looking pretty decent here now. The trim has been painted. Um, this uh, mask all um, fluid I pointed out earlier is working very well. Um, unlike the other masking fluid I was using, you only need to really put one, maybe two coats on, um, and it peels off uh, very easily. So uh, something you might want to think about getting a hold of if you have to paint uh, certain uh, patterns and things on your model that uh, uh, would be a little easier versus using masking tape alone. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these on to the model and I'll show you what it looks like here when they are assembled. Okay, so here we have the completed cockpit. The doors have been attached to the cockpit here now, so it's pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And also held in the clamp here, I have the main body uh, with the landing gear now attached. Uh, I really couldn't document this, it all had to be done uh, with both hands here, so uh, the way the landing gear was attached was I glued on this um, circular piece here onto the main body, and then one by one I just uh, placed the landing gear into each of the openings there, which I had to drill out, by the way, uh, with a Dremel a little bit because they just weren't large enough and deep enough, um, and I just uh, put super glue on the end of them and just kind of balanced it with my other hand while I got the right angles. Um, so it uh, super glue dries, dries pretty quickly and I used an accelerator so it wasn't too bad and then I attached the uh, rear uh, leg in the same fashion. So that's all done. Next will be to work on the engines and attaching them to the main body and then finally uh, gluing on the cockpit and then we'll move on to the decals and just some final decals. Okay, so we have most of the ship put together now, and I say most because there are a few final details to add in. There's an antenna that goes up here, and uh, also on the rear part of the ship as well. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part it is put together here. And um, so the uh, engines went on fairly easily. Um, there are some gaps along where the wings go in. Uh, but uh, for the most part it's actually looking alright here. So. I'm going to go ahead and finish up a few final details and I'll do the final review.